Hello and welcome to my third and final game of this stage of ITSL playoffs against Peter Viren, which uh, who I am facing in this final game as VUSA. I won the second game, I lost the first game. Now we will decide who's going to advance further in the tournament. And what I get at the start of this game is a pretty terrible hand, but um, defectors at least make sure that I don't get purged. So it's a pretty standard thing. I'm gonna discard socialists with blockade, late fiddle, East European unrest, and NATO for ops. Try to hold on to Nasser probably and decide a coup and score Asia for the best possible score. Uh, of course, I can enter France safely since I'm holding socialists, so I don't really need that much to overprotect Italy. And uh, since I'm playing defectors as my headline, I'm not really scared of Suez or the goal. So that's the idea. Unfortunately, Romanian abdication isn't my favorite thing to defect, but well, it happens. Maybe it at least means that he has a bad hand. I'm not really sure if that's true, but well, I can also always hope. It can be a little bluish. Whoa, wait, really? Hmm. Interesting. So, he just casually headlines Romanian abdication, and then he cruise Italy with China. Not suspicious at all. So, of course I'm expecting a Europe scoring from him. So that's a must. The question is, do I go to Iraq, Pakistan or Malaysia? I think I'm going to Pakistan. Nah, I should probably go to Malaysia, right? Nah, I... Damn it. I have to exit Iran. Maybe I just go to Iraq. Going to Pakistan is risky if he cruise it and cruise well. If I had more ops, I would probably still do it. But without ops, without in the Pakistani war, I probably can't allow. But to happen, so I guess I will stay in my lane and just calmly secure my presence in the Middle East, in a free stability country, drop Asia for minus one, hope to get some value from Europe if he really has the scoring. That's probably the way to go. Oh, and if he has the scoring, he can't really get rid of it in any way, because even if he has five-year plan, he's not gonna be able to discard it, because he has played the China card, so that kind of messes up his hand structure, unless he has also UN intervention with some blue event and he can fix that, but I don't expect that to be the case. And with me having, now Fidel actually becomes a really good card for me, because now I have the China card and I can throw him into the Kuobu battleground in form of Cuba, of course, which means that CIA is gonna become a problem for him pretty quickly this game, which is, well, basically as quickly as possible, with Fidel and China card both being played first turn. Well, he has solved that problem before it actually appeared, and he actually has five-year plan and UN intervention, and info Pakistan war, and Korean war, Oh, Jesus Christ. So he has the answers to all 
my place, I think. Damn it. Okay. So, I bet he's going... Jesus, that's pretty complicated. That complicates a lot of things. You and Fiverr plan to can cover Middle East, Indo-Pakistani war, and Korean war. I don't really understand why he went for that easily, but okay. Maybe that was a correct play. I wouldn't do so, but okay. Back and cover. <laughs> he has no access. That's the plus I have to notice. And to be fair, that's a pretty big one. He has no access. The question is, do I really want to fight for something in Asia? <sighs> I would have to enter Pakistan and India for that. And that means that if he wins in the Pakistani war, it's a pretty big deal. So I'm probably not gonna do that. Fighting for the Middle East doesn't make much sense. Since, well, he's gonna discard it anyway. And... Well, nah, and he can even take South Korea in the worst case scenario. I don't even, even have hopes to take Pakistan, India, and Thailand, right? Because that would be at least eight ops. So, in theory, I could, but in practice, it's undoable. So, what is the way to go for me? I should probably enter Pakistan anyway. Right. I don't want him to crew me out of Iran with duck and cover without entering Pakistan first. But he's not gonna do it with the CIA. And if he uses if he uses duck and cover to crew me out of Iran and lower Defcon twice in one in one move. That means he's not gonna be able to discard me to this story anywhere, uh, anymore. So maybe that's not as big of an issue. So the question is, do I, what do I do with the CIA then? Maybe I just, maybe I just go for Panama actually. Maybe that's actually what I do. That's a pretty passive play with the CIA, unfortunately. But I don't think I have anything better to do. He's probably gonna like enter South Korea or something like that, and then I guess I will just drop Asia for minus one because, like, with him having all the wars uh, in terms of Asia, it, there's just nothing I can really do. I can't enter Pakistan or South Korea safely, so I'm not gonna even bother. I should get the middle up somehow, so I will probably do something with Fidel, but I will let him do them first. He enters Afghanistan. Uh, yeah, that's a perfect moment to get rid get rid of Asia. And let's see what is his plan. UN and probably DAC. He goes for Pakistan anyway, which is understandable because Middle East will be discarded and uh, Europe is basically stuck for now. I guess I will cook Pakistan anyway, and that will get me millops at least. Well, that's a terrible role, so that doesn't grant me anything. Uh, then I guess I will try to get to Malaysia. That's my next target for the turn. Uh, at least I got millops.
Yeah, that's understandable. Let's get rid of that. If he doesn't lower the death count, I will probably need to do it myself. So then I guess I will go for Fidel to Thailand and then on my last AR event Nasser and Ku immediately. I think that's probably the best I can do because he's gonna go for Burma of course to put pressure on me. I will now go for Thailand to of course take it. Now he will play the five year plan and he will take Laos and do something else, probably take South Korea or maybe overprotect Pakistan or maybe break West Germany, something like that. And then uh, we'll be stuck in a position where the Afghan is at four, so Thailand is cruel and to uh, get rid of that threat I would need to lower the Afghan, so I will, will do that by playing Nasser for event, which I have to do anyway, and cooling and hoping for a at least five, hopefully a six, four will be pretty bad, but definitely better, better than three or two or one. So that's the plan. A pretty tough turn one, but he didn't have a perfect hand either, and he didn't get any access cards, and he let me have the China card, so I guess that's fine. Okay, that's to be expected. Uh, and now let's get rid of Nasser for now. Okay, that's nice. Okay. Captured Nazis, Europe. Decol. De Gaulle. Norad, US, Japan. Olympic Games, no perch, no nuclear death, but no martial. And no distal. Okay, that's a pretty clear captured Nazi scientist's headline, I think. This is a scary hand. Uh, I don't have perch. He may perch me. He may headline Suez Crisis to play, break Europe scoring. He may go for Vietnam revolts and use A4, he for sure got to take over Thailand and there's not much I can do about it, unless I'm willing to give him back the China card. <laughs> the funny thing is that if he has A4, and I guess he has uh, A4, then I can spend the China card to take Thailand uh, once more, and uh, then if he has another 4 which is of course possible, he can just use another for up to take Thailand again. So Thailand is not in a safe situation here. I don't like it. Of course playing the China card isn't that terrible. It would enable me to hold both the goal and the call and that's probably something I want to happen. But the price of paying the China card and not even getting Thailand for it, it was pretty terrifying. So I really hope he will just cool and ideally even fail that coup and then I will get to enter, Th uh, enter Angola, overprotect Thailand and just everything will be so nice. But I don't expect that to happen. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't have a forup. Would be so cool. Would be great actually if he had no forups. But then Vietnam Revolt's headline would just be very bad. I don't know what he's going for. Oh, he has Marshall. But that means he probably has no other forups, right? If he had any other forup, he probably wouldn't play Marshall. Unless that's a bluff. If it's a bluff, it's a very good one. So I guess I will fall for it because. He deserves, this bluff is so good, if it's a bluff, that he deserves to 
get something for it. So I guess I will go for the China card. Right? It's probably worth it. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. What's the worth of Thailand? On one hand, I can coup, which protects my battlegrounds. There is a chance I kick him out of Iraq, which would be very, very good. But that's a pretty slim chance. Uh, I get Milops, which I won't get otherwise, so that's two VPs right away. And there is a big chance that I would deny him Milops which he can get only by Arab Israeli war. So that's something. So it's worth pretty much a lot. Thailand is not something that swings Asia. It's relevant for uh, for Southeast Asia scoring, of course, but it only happens once. Hmm. And it requires me to spend the China card and then overprotect it. And then from my side it's vulnerable to brush war. I don't really like that. I think I'm just gonna cry rock. Nope. Not today. Okay, so now the scary thing is that if he has Arab Israeli war, you, he may event it right away. And if he wins, that I'm screwed. I mean, not really, but it's really bad for me if he hits that. But if he doesn't, then my position in the Middle East is great. Even with that failed pool. Another unknown is Disnow. Uh, if he doesn't have it, then I'm in a really good spot this game. If he has it, I'm not in a really good spot this game, but that's kind of how Disnow works, I guess. He may take fuel from Vietnam, so that's not really an issue for him. Yeah, two scary cards are Arab Israeli War and Distal. Oh my god, it's fine. Okay. Uh, this may be one of two things. It may either be just him spending influence because he has nowhere to spend it, or he's building up for uh, Distal. Because he, he may want to get additional fuel by playing cards in the Southeast Asia. Regardless of which option it is, I'm just gonna spread like that anyway. So now Arab Israeli war isn't as much of a problem. Uh, I enter Pangola because, of course, Distal may not only grant him access to South America but also to Angola and Zaire. So I want to be present there. If he wants to overtake Indonesia with a 2 up, then I guess go for it, buddy. I will allow that. Black Eye is gone, so I will surely be able to hold Decal. The real question is, do I want to hold Decal knowing that I may get Perch next turn? But I probably do. Because there is a chance that I will get the purge, there is a chance that he will get the purge but he won't purge me, there is a chance that I will defect it, containment is still in the game so I may counter the purge with containment. Fuck, he had pistol of course. So he's going for Zaire, Venezuela, Angola and Chile, yeah. Um, that makes sense of course. Let's do something like that. Oh no, I don't want to give him milops. Okay, so that's surely not something I'm doing. Then maybe I just take Algeria? And if he t goes for Tunisia, I'm screwed, but... Yeah, that's a good question. Or I could try realignments, but... Do I realign here? Do I just realign Venezuela? 
and make a sad face if I fail. <laughs> If I fail realignment and he enters Tunisia and Saharan states, I just give up everything. I really want to hold on to Libya, so I will let him spread. I will drop Europe now if he spreads, then it's good for him. If he enters Tunisia, then I get... Really? Okay. Fuck! Are you serious? Okay, that's very bad. I really hoped that wouldn't succeed. Okay, uh, that sucks. The question is, do I strike with realignments now, or do I spread now, or do I just take Algeria or Libya? I probably want to space the goal. I don't really want him to have access to France and Algeria. But I get another chance of uh, realigning him. Okay, I think now I should try realignments in Venezuela. Sucks. Okay, but works. The third one, Algeria, Zaire, or Chile? Uh, Algeria, probably? Uh, there is a case for Cuba, but I don't think that's necessary. Let's go for Algeria. Okay, that's nice. So that worked. Mm. I could, of course, have gone for Zaire to then take it with Cambridge, but then he would just he would still be able to coup that, and I don't really... And when he's not in Algeria, I get to have a stable country in uh, Africa. Now, of course, he forces me to take Libya, which I wanted to do anyway, so that's not a big deal. And it's probably fine. I will just space the goal, I guess. And at least he didn't get Pico. I'm really mad about this Arab Israeli war. And he had containment, sure. That's very annoying as well. That means that I won't get containment, so if he gets purged, he just gets to purge me. And it's kind of worse if I place the goal. But thanks to it, I can at least take France and Algeria so I can throw the goal out of the deck, I guess. It's still unfortunate. Can I get Perch at least? I can get Perch at least. And I get Asia, that's so bad! But I get Arab Israeli War, so there is a chance of it giving me something. Truman for Mosen. Oh, he gets independent, special, nuclear test ban and Suez crisis, that's a pretty solid hand if you ask me, but at least I got the purge and I guess I can use it now. There's probably no better headline for me anyway, so let's go for it. I will always get the chance of playing in the Pakistani war for Pakistan, like there's no reason for him to use his first AR to just take India or something like that, that would be very weird. And I got Comic-Con and NATO from very shuffle, so that's not bad. Of course he goes for Suez. Okay, so uh, I guess that didn't make much of a difference, but I purged him since he was 6 anyway. He's probably in the Pakistani war time, right? Yeah, I don't want him, to, I don't want to wait for him to grab India. That sucks. Okay, so I'm going to pay a lot for Asia, from 7 to 9 GPs, depending on how he plays. 
Uh, this puts me in a pretty bad spot overall. Hmm. That's very unlucky, but he let me have a shot at a 50-50 Pakistan war and I failed anyway. At least I got uh, milops from that, but now he doesn't have milops and I do, so he can try something like entering Uruguay or Cameroon. The question is, do I want to enter Colombia? That's not obvious. Independent threats, Korea? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm going to pay 8 since there is absolutely nothing I can do about it. And if he had Europe, he would drop it immediately. Like, there is no need for him to play independent words first. Whereas, I, I think I may want to go to Colombia. I'm not sure, but I think it may be correct. But, well, on the other hand, he doesn't really have a great cool target. I have South Africa and Mexico to take. So, maybe I should just try being more stable. And get one VP from not letting him take the Milops. Because I need to take South Africa, Mexico, France and UK, but like seven VPs itself. Okay, so he solved that for me, because now I'm surely going Uruguay. He he left me no choice, so I guess I will take it. Under Purge there is no real way for him to take me out of Uruguay, so now I will, get, I will just take Brazil and Venezuela. Olympic Games, he takes Nigeria for that, but a fair trade. I'm probably not gonna take the UK if it comes to taking an, a, an European battleground. I should probably go for either Canada for potential Norad in the future, or Spain uh, for Italy brush or protection. The UK is unnecessary since NATO and Special are both in the discard pile, so they don't really matter anymore. And I will be holding blockade once more. But now it's not a big of a deal because the purge is gone. Unfortunately, I can't take Venezuela, France, and Spain because that costs five ops, and I only have four to my disposition. And I'm not taking Mexico or South Africa, but that's because I succeeded in South America, so that's fine. Nuclear subs will be huge if I manage to draw them. That would be great. Okay, the factors. Okay, that's reasonable. Uh, let's... Let's give him Kanakan. I could theoretically enter Venezuela with only one VP, uh, with only one op, and put 
Truman influence into Spain or something like that to get Europe domination. But the problem with that is that, of course, he doesn't have a better target than Venezuela anyway, probably. And now, I don't know, unless he goes for Algeria, I don't know. But if I do that, then Venezuela is a really juicy target for him, and well, he just has an easier time of uh, winning in South America. Okay, so he dominates Africa by a large margin. I don't have a way of stopping that. I will just take Venezuela. Let's see what we get. So this Asia is tragic, of course. Central is pretty tricky. Brushwar is random as hell, but it looks decent. Salt is potentially huge. Puppet governments are n not necessarily great, but are definitely not bad. Flower power is a really tricky card as well. It has to be played after the brush war or both brush wars if I salt it. And liberation is annoying, but at least he didn't get it. So the obvious play here is to play puppets and go for Mexico, Nicaragua and Haiti. And I don't see anything better. Yeah, let's let's just do it. Missile envy, okay. So now suddenly brush war becomes kind of problematic. If he could Nicaragua or Haiti, of course, I'm perfectly fine with going Nigeria with Missile and it's fine. So, uh, I I guess he won't do that. I guess he will cool Algeria and then, well, we'll see where it goes from there. I, If he cools Algeria, then basically, regardless of what he rolls, I'm going to realign Cuba. I basically have to. And there is a pretty big chance that I will be playing the China card this turn <laughs> because I pretty much need ops and I don't have many of them I have nearly none of them actually <laughs> I had some of them in forms of flower power oh my god you got dark I hate you Ugh. okay so actually he has no problems in this game he just Kills two birds with one stone, he can both lower the death con and he can crew Haiti. So I guess uh, it doesn't matter. I guess I take Mexico and take Spain. Or maybe now I don't need to take Spain, I will take Canada. <sighs> so let's see what he does. That's I don't like it, I don't like it at all. Of course I would like to play Brush, because now I'm probably playing Brush on Argentina. But uh, I couldn't do it now, because I was forced to play the Missile Envy. So there is a chance he will just grab Chile. The question is what he's, what is he gonna do with Nicaragua, right? If he goes for Nicaragua now, then I guess I get to Brush Argentina. And if he doesn't, then I guess I get to drop me the central for two, and then I will see what happens next. Really? Okay, I'm really fucking glad that that didn't work. Uh, I hope he doesn't have junta, but like, no, I'm not dropping central anyway. Okay, now I probably should play Brush to Argentina. Come on! <sighs> okay. So, that Brush War was a lot. It was worth exactly minus 2 DPs for me, thanks to Flower Power and Miss Lendy, with which he got it. 
So that fucking sucks. I hope he doesn't have fun out of this, but that would be a joke, so I, I guess. I will assume he doesn't. He's probably gonna take Chile now, then I will take Venezuela, then... Or maybe I'm not gonna take Venezuela immediately. Maybe that's not even worth it. Yeah, he takes Chile. Now I will probably drop Central, because why not? It's not gonna get better, unfortunately. After he will day six in Haiti, uh, that's not something I can pursue. Okay, he spaces obviously. Now I can take Venezuela with how I learned. Voice would be pretty dope if I drew it, but I didn't. By the way, on the discard there are no red cards, that's actually fun. Okay, that doesn't matter at all. Uh... That's space? That Willy Brandt event was pretty weird. Alright, now I'm gonna drop Southeast Asia. Not much I can do with it. We will bury you, that's annoying. And he equalizes that, that's fine. Let's get Purge voice or ABM. There are still some cards I can block with Purge. ABM just gets me another African battleground, probably, which is something. But I can get Bear Trap. Bear Trap is still in the deck, so I will go for Perch, because if I get Bear Trap plus Perch, it can cause some real problems for him. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm going for that, that's for sure. That was the whole point. <laughs> so, I guess I'm not going to withdraw from the plan now, when it finally gets to work. I got grain sales, so Perch won't stop him from playing it. Free scorings are less than optimal. Brezhnev is fucking tragic. Really? Okay, so that doesn't even work. <clears throat> I guess now what matters is the fate of African Pools, or actually whatever he's going to go, I'm not even sure. He may still, he may even go for Italy if he wants to, because the only scoring that is not in my hand is the European one, so he may have Europe scoring and want to like play around it. So we'll see, I guess. I can take something out with grain sales, but. If he doesn't, he should probably coup because if he doesn't coup now, then I basically get two African coups by default and that can flip the entire region. Uh, now, after he got Brezhnev, it would be better for me if I chose ABM, but well. It's not like I could have predicted that it's gonna happen. It's just unlucky. I wonder what he goes. Algeria is good, Venezuela is good, Panama is good, Libya and Iran are good, Italy is good. He has many decent targets. Oh, he gives me that, okay. 
that's a pretty fucking bad in Tehran. I didn't discard the CIA because, uh, Jesus, I didn't discard the UN intervention because CIA is gone and lone gunman is not. And I didn't discard Junta because if I'm gonna get uh, Kennedy at some point, or... Are you serious? What the fuck is this? Okay, whatever. Uh, let's see what I get. Like, like, Jesus fucking Christ. It's just a joke. It's just, it's such a joke. Okay, so he got exactly six, so I guess Libya is gone now as well. Uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's absurd. Okay, so now Middle East is bad, Africa is bad, and South America is basically the only reasonable scoring, which I can score for zero, so hooray, I guess. <laughs> I will get rid of it since having three scorings in my hand is just tragic, so I will not even wait for that. I can use Alliance for, for, ops, uh, for, for VPs, so that's pretty good. I don't even have hopes to crew Cameroon. I mean, this is unplayable since Flower Power is at play, so that's not gonna happen. Liberation is completely unplayable. Okay, he spaces that so Arab Israeli war is not gonna be playable like in the nearest future, so I can just as well space it as well and fail. I hope he gives me Kennedy, I guess, but there's very little I can do. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. That's... So I now... Oh, okay. So he does that as well. Okay, so I get to discard Alliance, I guess, and now I just get to drop two scorings one after another, and then I lose. So that's the game. He has Europe scoring, probably. Oh, okay, I get that. Thank you. So what do you have also? So he probably has to have nuclear stuff, right? That's the only reason for him to do such something like that. Okay, I'm really glad that I played around the chance that he'll get, uh, give me Kennedy. So, now, if he's gonna play nuclear subs... Oh no, he can also have 5-year plan. He can have... He either has 5-year plan or nuclear subs. There is no reason for him to have anything else, right? Or he has just Europe scoring? That's... nah. I, I don't like it at all, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what's going on with this game. Two. 
<sighs> okay. I am gonna bear trap him. If I bear trap him now, he probably dis... Okay, I think bear trap is fine here. Because he either has nuclear subs or Europe, and regardless of which one it is, I pretty much am fine with bear trapping him. Right? Because, like... If he has nuclear... He probably has nuclear subs, and by bear trapping him, I kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine, that's fine. Because if I play shuffle now, and because I want to bear trap him, and yeah, and if he plays nuclear subs, it basically lets me coup, but I don't want to coup, I want to bear trap him. So, um... So I guess that's a reason for... Um... For me not wanting to get nuclear subs now. I prefer them to stay in the deck. And, uh, okay, so he discards nuclear subs, and now I get to do something in Europe, and probably the best thing to do for me is something like that. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. But of these grants me one country now, and a good chance of getting a number of those countries later. Okay, what do we get? Europe, UN. Uh, East European unrest, colonial rail guards, cultural. That's pretty okay. You too. Okay, that's a decentish hand, I think. Yeah, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. And I can play Muslim with UN. Okay. So, uh, do I get anything really by playing the fighter plan? No. He's gonna crew anyway. So maybe I just go for colonials to kind of kind of defend against a potential coup he may perform in Africa to mitigate the damage. What is he gonna headline? He doesn't have many good headlines. He can go for Chen or he can go for Kunta. I hope he didn't get Kunta this time. Like one small step, maybe. Let's see. Oh, of course, he got Junta. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's good. Uh, I don't know, maybe the good thing about it is that at least if he lowers the death count now, he will. Nah, nah, it's bad every time. It's just bad that he got Junta. But, like, well. Mathematically, it was more uh, probable that I would get it. He gets out. So now, of course, I have to choose between Italy and Panama and Zaire. Because, well, everything's open now. So, uh, I guess I'm just gonna take Italy because I have to, with Europe just about to discard. <sighs> and what do I take? Probably Zaire. Zaire is the only country I can really get with one up, so I think it's better to just take Zaire and have it than to put another point in Panama, so he has to spend two ops instead of one to get it, but it doesn't really give me anything. Latin America, okay. Panama, Zimbabwe, sure. Um, okay, that's a good moment to cool. Uh, with what though? Probably with Portuguese. It would be good if I could hold five year plan, right? So that he doesn't get to discard any cards, uh, any scorings in particular. So I will cook Cameroon, and then if he wants to take Zaire by force, he can. Mm. 
now I have access to Azair. Well, of course, he can cook a moon back. But... Okay, he has summit, so he does. He rolls a5. Uh, I will do that again, I guess. That's pretty significant. He just tried. Yeah. Yeah, so now that doesn't seem to uh, be feasible anymore. I need to drop Europe somehow, but I'm not gonna spend all my three ops at, on cruise in Cameroon, so if you want to realign me, then go for it. I am there, okay. Sure, to be expected. Okay, now I think it's a good moment to play the China card uh, with cultural. Because I'm, unless I want to space cultural, but I don't think that's reasonable. Uh, the fact is that taking over, yeah, taking India or stealing one of the Koreas from him doesn't really give me much. So I will just go for Argentina and see if he has a way to respond to that because his hand was pretty weak, so maybe he doesn't. Okay, it seems that he does not. Uh, okay. So let's grab Argentina and start going for India since it's free for now. It seems that he got a really bad hand. That's helpful. Not like my was perfect, but it was definitely better than his. A lot of one ups also. Ah, three. Well, that's kind of a lot. So that junta was very annoying, but well. The rest of the hand. The Chai and junta were two great cards for him, but the rest of the hand was pretty bad. Oh, Jesus. I got so triggered over that before that Kennedy, but discarding Middle East and Africa was huge. What do you have? Korean War is still in the deck, right? Yeah. And OPEC. Those are two problematic cards. He's thinking about something. Okay, he gives me Sadat, that's very good. And he goes for India. Uh, which makes sense, I will just grab it. Unfortunately, it makes me vulnerable to the Pakistani war, but well. It's gone for now, so I guess I will play that. Yeah, Cuban Missile Crisis is a good draw. OPEC, actually a good draw because I wouldn't want him to get it. John Paul is useful. Usuri is probably okay. -ish. Kitchen Debate is probably useless. He got OAS and Panama, which is good. He got one small step and arms race, which is bad. He also got Korean and Warsaw. I'm glad he got Warsaw, actually. Because he's probably gonna play Warsaw for Ops, because everyone always does, and like, no one ever plays it for event. So, uh, I guess his Europe may be in danger, and that's something that may come in handy in the late war. Uh, Alright. Let's see. 
Colonial rare guards are potentially useful here, just as is missile envy. The problem with missile envy here, the problem with missile envy here is that he may just give me arms, arms raised like nine times out of them. The, the chances of him just redrawing Quillberry or Muslin is not big enough. So I'm gonna go for Colonials. <laughs> ABM. Okay. So I wouldn't take it with Missile MD anyway because he obviously headlines it, so... I guess Nigeria is gone. No, he went for Argentina actually, that's interesting. Uh... Let's do something like that and see what he does with it. Or wait, like if he takes Argentina, do I want to call Angola? Because right now Angola is... he has advantage of 5 in Angola, so I would need 6 to overtake it. Uh, I mean, I would need to kick out his 6 ops to overtake it. And stability 2 plus 6 is 8. So if I cool if I free up, I will need at least five. That's probably not gonna happen. If I put colonial influence verb, then I guess it would need to be four. Hmm. Interesting. But if I roll a four, then I could as well cool Panama, and then it would be enough for Libya. Actually, Queen Libya would be very good for me as well. But do I have anything better? Probably not. Sovereign State doesn't really do much for me. So I guess I would just do for go for something like that. Like, the only thing is that now if he cools Nigeria, then I don't have access there. But firstly, it probably won't matter, because if he cools it, he probably gets control over it, so whatever. And if he fails completely, I have access anyway, so it only matters if he zeroes it. And secondly... Okay. Whoa. Wait, that's... A, whoa, that's interesting. Oh, okay. So... Okay, that's, that's pretty good for me. That's pretty good for me. Uh, so now, of course, his arms race is active. But if he plays it, then I guess it will enable me to do some shenanigans with this Envy. I hope he just didn't redraw back in the cover. That would be terrible, but like, what are the chances? It's like losing to Summit event, right? It never happens. So I guess I will uh, stick to that. He has one more country here, two less than me here, if I take Argentina. If he retakes that, then that's one more for him, so it's equal, one more for him, one more for me. But he has two more in Asia, so it's plus two for him. So, kitchen debates wouldn't, will probably not be available. I could go for Ayande. I think I will go for Ayande. I'm not going to discard anything since Kennedy is gone. And I can... Uh, and I can get rid of that event from the game because I'm gonna play it sooner or later anyway. And I think it's reasonable to get rid of, of it now so that if I ever realign him out of Chile completely, he, he's already gone from there and he doesn't have a way back. I don't want to be forced later during the turn to uh, give him access again. Okay, our Israeli war is pretty harmless. If he does what? He goes for Afghanistan as well. Interesting. Oh, uh, that's space, since he didn't force me to do anything in particular yet. And that's unfortunately a failure. That's really bad. Now he plays one small step. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, then I... Um, Maybe I should have played the story immediately, because I pr I'm pretty sure I prefer to get the China card now than to get get influence in Asia, right? 
well, if it does something weird with Korean War, then I guess it may change, but... Yeah, he even one small step. Uh, okay, give me the China card. Since Nixon is gone and Cultural is gone, uh, this way I get access to the China card for the rest of, the rest of my life, which is pretty good. Especially with gunmen somewhere there waiting for me. He goes for arms race, and now he has OIS, Panama, Korean, and Warsaw, so I can deny him Warsaw by playing his LNT. This way, Warsaw Pact is gone from the game, and that means that West Germany and Poland are up for grabs. Kind of. Okay, uh. Yeah. Okay, let's get Milops since I'm gonna do it with a free up anyway. Uh, Cameron looks decent. Blah. Yucky lo roll, but alright. Okay, he overprotects everything there, that's understandable. Uh, I don't really have anything very specific to do yet, so I will just do that. Now let's see, he's probably gonna play one into Panama and give me uh, the Panama Canal return. At least that's what I'd probably do if I were him. No, he actually plays the Korean War right away. Alright. So, okay, of course. So, it kind of worked what I did, because he got scared of Africa and he tried really hard to get back his domination. So now he's stuck with OAS and Panama Canal. So he only has one ops to play, right? So if I do that, he has no way of fixing Poland. So I do that, now he plays one of those uh, cards he has, which is a 1-up. Probably Panama Canal and he puts one into Panama. And then I can just go into Poland. And he can truly stop me in any way. Okay. Jesus. That's an interesting hand. Whoa. What's going on here? Alright, let's try to analyze a little bit what's happening. An Evil Empire is a great card because it earns me a VP at least, and it probably earns me a little bit more uh, due to the fact that I'm gonna play Brush War. Glasnost is risky. I really don't want to be in the uh, war games reach, and for now I'm not. Nuclear subs is tricky, but it may become useful later. I'm not really sure how much, but we'll see about that. Uh, Panama, Pakistan, potentially Angola or Zaire later on, or Libya are good brush war targets. But before I do that, I probably want to play Evil Empire regardless, so I will just go for Evil Empire right away. Okay, Gunman is gone, that's good. Uh, because... I want to be able to play Brush War whenever the need arises. So... The sooner I'm done with playing... With getting rid of Flower Power, the better for me. Of course, it's kind of a waste to not headline grain sales, I know, it's sad, but uh, maybe I wouldn't do that if I had a, like a genius 10 out of 10 crew target to hit with grain sales, but I don't really, 
I could, it could be a form of protecting Nigeria, I guess, but with nuclear subs in hand and Glasnost, I, I'm not even sure how much I care. So I will do that. Of course, my priority is to space ASAP before he does, unless he, do, he does it now because he can, he can cool Nigeria with long gunmen and then space immediately, and that would be reasonable for him. I hope he fails the space roll if he does that. Chai is a good... Okay, he failed that roll, that's good. I expect him to space now, actually. And then I will probably be forced to use Brush War, because it's the most reliable source of potential VPs for me. So if, if, he, if he spaces and hits the track, then he, he's at 7, I need him to be at 6. So then I brush Panama and I have two thirds of a chance of uh, winning that war. If he has African or Central American or probably Middle Eastern as well scorings, he's gonna drop them right now. He had Asia, which works just fine. And now the question is... No, okay, if he had any of the other scorings, maybe except Africa, he would drop it as well. He would choose Asia as well. So now I probably have a choice between going for Africa or spacing. And I think I prefer to space now. It's weird that he went for Asia and not space. It looks like he has war games, honestly. But like, what am I gonna do? If I play Fighter Plan or, or Brain Silos, then it's like 1 in a 7 chance. It's like nothing. So I will space Chen now. It's of course not enough to uh, secure the win if he has war games. He's just gonna play the war games and win. But but that's just a terrible luck. Like Jesus fucking Christ. What? Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. So that's how my uh, adventure with ITSL ends. I don't feel like there was much to be done the last turn. He just got the best scoring he could have gone. He just got for more games. Well, he got everything. Uh, the game wasn't that one-sided, but like, it ended how it ended. There is not much commentary needed. I hope you enjoyed the game if you seen it. Uh, and I was... <laughs> and that's all because of the fucking started during the first game. Well, uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in my next video probably from the other tournament because uh, I'm not participating in the ITSL anymore. See ya!